Hey, what's happening? Today we're going to go over retrieval augmented generation. This stuff is awesome. We're going to take a database, any database. In this situation, we're going to take Confluence. We're going to roll it through a vector database called Pinecode and create embeddings. Then we're going to take that information, query it up, and then send it to OpenAI for our natural language processing on our response. So buckle up. Let's get started. So on the screen here, I quickly have a, uh, a workflow diagram. I, I live with this stuff. It's kind of how I think, so it kind of helps me out. Um, in this situation here, uh, we're going to use Confluence. You'll see over here there's a thing called App Confluence. That's this process right here. It will go out and call our Confluence database, fetch back our pages. It's then going to go through and remove anything that's flagged as an internal only, and then go ahead and save it into a CSV file. Well, it gets the content first, obviously, but uh, then saves it into a CSV. At that point, we're good to go. And the reason why we do that is this process may run every five minutes, every half hour, twice a day. Uh, in our situation, it's a knowledge base, so it may run twice a day, once a day. But if you're doing different data, you may run that thing every five minutes to keep everything up to date. And that's what makes this so powerful, up to date information in your chatbot. In here, next thing we're gonna do is go through Pinecone. We're gonna go ahead and import the CSV. We're gonna clean up the data. That's <laughs> the, 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 data <laughs> the data cleaning took, it's surprising how long you spend cleaning data. Um, so, it, it definitely will consume most of your time when you're doing this. And then if you've done this long enough, you know why. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and create embeddings off the data. When you create embeddings, you're going to have to create it. Um, you need to call something to embed or create your vectors. In our case, since we're calling OpenAI for our uh, natural language processing, we're going to use the embedding in OpenAI and to retrieve our embeddings back. And then we're going to save this into a pinecone vector database, which is awesome. Uh, it's almost like having a, a search engine. Uh, can't say any other names of search engines, but it's like having your own private search engine for anything anyone types in. So super cool. After that, we're going to hit up OpenAI. We're going to generate a question. Then we're going to embed that question. So again, we're going to send it over to OpenAI, get back our embeddings. Because we want to take the embedding information from our question, match it up with our embeddings in our, in our um, pinecone, so our vector-to-vector -vector comparison, so we can get similarities between that. Uh, then we're going to do a search with the embedded question. After that, we're going to go ahead and create the prompt, like we normally do, based on our retrievals, and then do all the natural language processing. So this is really awesome stuff. Uh, these last two, the green and the blue, are actually in this app, Pinecone OpenAI. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. It seemed like a big intro. Sorry about that. Uh, Confluence. All right. If you look at this, there's a. it looks like a lot of code, but 80, 80 to 90 percent of this code is just error checks. It, it, everything you go through here. When you look through this code, you'll start seeing that a lot of it is error checks. I mean, this first, this example right here, this line right here and this line right here are the only two you need. Everything else is just checking for correct stuff coming back. Cause you know, when you're getting, when you're dealing with data, it, there is some odd stuff. The one thing you wanna go through is just go to the very bottom of the page uh, in your main, so the main function is where you want to go. It has all the logic where you want to update, uh, where you're going to save your file, the, the amount of information you're going to pull in. Um, this I usually default to 25 when I'm first testing or even 5 to 10 when I'm first getting it done. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go big here and I'm going to hit, uh, let's see, 222 of them. Uh, I'm going to kick this off and then as it's running through its process, I'm going to kind of walk through what it did. The only reason I do over 200 because uh, in the Confluence version I have, which is local on site, it only allows 200 in chunks. 
Um, so I do want to do 222 to show that the other the other data is coming in. So we're going to go ahead and save that. Let me go ahead and kick off a terminal. So we're going to go ahead and type in Python. And this one's app confluence. All right. So what it is, is it goes out and fetches the pages, uh, 222 of them. Uh, it's now going through and doing the is internal status. So this is actually querying for the labels and the different tags that are on your actual Confluence pages to find out if any of your label has internal. Um, so we'll remove that. Uh, and it does look like there was 37 of the internal records removed. Um, so now you'll see there's 165 items that we are going to go out and get the content for. Um, so that did save us, in this case, it only saved us 37 of, re of getting all that content. But in the long run, it does help. Uh, and we're good to go. So successfully saved all the records. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the, what's in the KB CSV file. Um, so this is the information pulled from a, obviously a text a test account inside of Confluence. It's going to pull back, what did it say, 180, 185. We'll make sure we have them all here. And 186, which is one of the, because of the, obviously, the um, the. the the column names so we're in good shape okay so now we're on to the second part if you actually look at the screen the very next part we're going to need is pinecone and open ai so we need to have a pinecone uh, account set up and open ai to have a pinecone account set up you need to go to pinecone.io uh, and sign up or if you do have an account just log in this will allow you to see all your indexes and this, this, this is where we'll go to after we create our stuff. As far as OpenAI goes, you're going to need to go to OpenAI and set up an account, a personal one that you can make a uh, API key that allows you to actually call. So we're in good shape on that one. All right. So let's go ahead and run the Pinecone Open. This one right here is very similar to the other one. Just a lot of code. Um, a lot of it error checks again uh, you'll see from the uh, main that we are running these things right here which is the important part this is my embeddings uh, this is my my chat that i'm going to be using and the index i will be creating at pinecone and the file i'm importing so let's go ahead and kick this off at pinecone All right, so the very first thing it does is going to go ahead and check and see if it exists. Uh, if it does not exist, it's going to go ahead and create one. So it imports the data, verifies that the information is there, and now it's going to uh, generate the embeddings. So, so basically what it does, if you go back to that screen, uh, it's, it's at this point right here. So in creating the embeddings that we need to have um, to store inside the vector database. So it goes through all the systems, figures out what it needs, and it's in good shape. It does take a little while to run it, um, but after it gets through the embeddings, it's pretty smooth sailing to ups to upsert into Pinecone. And it is an upsert, so it does it does it by ID. If it's in there, it will do an update. If it's not in there, it does an insert. Cool stuff. So let's go ahead and check and see if Upsert was created. Let's go ahead and go into our index where we were. And we should have another one there. There we go. And the data is all in there. So you'll see the metadata here. You, you'll see that the metadata only has two things, source and text. If you're importing different things that has 15 different uh, metadata that you want to track, they'll all be put into a JSON object under metadata. The ID field is critical to be able to do your upserting and the values actually store all the embeddings. So we're good to go on that. Now, one last thing I'm going to show is if you go into the Pinecone app, I'm going to make one modification. Uh, in this little area right here, I'm going to go ahead and do an if statement to check to see if it's created. This time, every time I run it, it doesn't create the index. If it's already created, don't keep creating the index. Um, so this way it will allow me to do it. But if I did have new information every time, I may want to still run an uh, upsert. Um, so there's a little cleanup there if you need to. 
Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just throw in this, throw this into a quick UI just so you can kind of um, see what it's capable of. So let me go ahead and save that. I'm going to kick it off again. And I think this goes into, yeah, local. So I'm going to go into the uh, local 88. And now I'm actually running the system. So if I just say, what is your contact information? Go ahead and do that. And I'm going to, and there it goes. There's all my information that it popped into based off what I had. And if you go back into um, my system here, you'll actually see that it did query it from there. So you can do debugging onto the system. I hope you find this beneficial. It's really hard to show the com how cool this is in such a short period of time. So I really do hope you enjoy it. All the code is available. Thank you very much.